Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the expression of cognac through terroir distillation and aging webinar. My name is Danny Colaescu, and I'm the beverage director at the Brandy Library and Copper and Oak, both bars located in New York City. I am also a certified cognac educator with the Bureau National Interprofessionnel du Cognac. I would also like to introduce our esteemed guests to you today. Benedict Hardy, which is the brand ambassador and area director for the Americas for Hardy Cognac. Alexandra Quintan, uh, Maison Remy Martin, head of international ambassadors. Sullivan Do, global brand ambassador for Duce Cognac. And David Boileau, director of education with Bureau National Interprofessionnel du Cognac. Benedict, would you like to say a few words about yourself? Well, it's always difficult to talk about yourself. I would prefer, I'd rather talk about your moustache, which is still spectacular, my dear. Um, talking about yourself, well, what can I say? I was born and raised in the cognac business, uh, even though I turned bad because I became a lawyer um, and decided to join the family business later on. Um, and my goal has been really to establish the name of my company and my family brand um, for many years. And the, the country that I chose was the United States. So I have no regret to say today that um, with the little, the little name that we have, I mean, we have tried to promote and, and, and really educate people about our communities. Thank you. Alexandra, would you like to say a few words about yourself? Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Uh, what I would say is that I've been in this uh, business for, for many years, um, uh, 14 years at the house of Rémi Martin, and uh, I started as a, an ambassador for, for the house, but I was an ambassador even before I got paid for it, uh, because my uh, initial background is uh, bartending, and, uh, and as a bartender back in uh, 2003, I was invited to uh, uh, to visit the house of Rémi Martin, and that's where I fell in love with the cognac region, uh, with this amazing liquid, and with uh, also the, uh, the town, the people that are making this, uh, this amazing liquid. And, and so uh, since then, I, I was uh, promoting those, uh, those amazing cognacs. Uh, and, uh, and I've been working with the Cellar Master, uh, with many people around the world to find new ways of uh, uh, of uh, enjoying cognac from cocktail to cigars to, to all sorts of ways. So I'm a bit of a, an Epicurean and, and uh, the best part of uh, the job is to exchange with people around beautiful liquid. So, so that's what I've been doing and, uh, and enjoying doing so. Excellent, thank you. Sullivan? Yeah, hi everybody. So my name is Sullivan Do. I'm the global brand ambassador for Duce Cognac. Uh, I've been in the position for like a bit more than a year and a half, but before that, I've been bartending for more than 10 years. And uh, I did notice that cognac is, was lacking in the, in the back bars of most of the bars that I worked. So I decided to open my first bar in 2014 called the Syndica, which was the very first cocktail bar using only French alcohol in order to promote the diversity we have in France and, uh, and just like keep on like promoting cognac actually became a cognac educator two years ago, three years ago, and then moved into being ambassador for one specific brand, which is Duce Cognac. Excellent. Thank you. David? Thank you, Dan. As Benedict, I was born in Cognac a long time ago now, uh, and um, I'm in charge of the, the, the development of Culture Cognac uh, since 15 years now, and uh, the objective is as Alexander said, share, patient, look for new things, and uh, have a very good time. I have a chance to, to share my time with uh, beautiful people as you, and uh, it's a very good chance. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. So today we will cover three topics. <clears throat> we'll, cover the top or, or we'll cover the topic of terroir, we'll cover the topic of distillation and maturation. But first of all, what is cognac? Well, cognac is actually two things, at least. One of them, it is an area. The second, it is a beverage. As an area, it is located in southwest France, right above Bordeaux, along the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. It is really a very, very short train ride, maybe about two and a half hours from Paris. As a beverage, it is a distilled spirit made out of wine, 
made out of grapes that are cultivated in a very well-defined and low-protected area. Let's have a look at a short video. So let's talk a little bit about terroir. We do have six crews in Cognac. The first one being Grand Champagne, we have Petit Champagne, Borderie, Bon Bois, Fan Bois, and Bois Ordinaire. The region enjoys a coastal climate with warm summers and mild winters. Due to the proximity of the Atlantic Ocean, we also have rain frequently, which really aids with the irrigation of the vines. The soils of the region are uh, mostly composed out of clay and limestone, which is really ideal for the growing of the white, uh, white grape varietal called Uni Blanc. Harvest happens at the end of the summer, the end of September, sometimes beginning of, uh, of October, and then we're gonna have vinification. During vinification, we are looking for two very, very, very important elements. One of them is that the wines should have low alcohol, in order to preserve all the compounds, the aromatic compounds in the wine. The second is that we are looking for something that has high acidity as to act as a natural preservative. It is very important to understand that the winemaker skill is absolutely primordial for this process as the wines have to be technically flawless. Now, would you, Benedict, please tell us what type of crews and why would you choose the eau de vis from this particular cruise in your cognacs? Well, when you're the fifth generation of a family in a company that has been in this business, you don't exactly select by yourself. You continue, you try to continue the tradition and the way your ancestors have chosen for you. Um, I think the great difficulty, and I'm sure it's true for my colleagues, is to keep the style of the house. Well, at Hardy, and I have right behind me a model of Fin Champagne Cognac that was made by my grandfather just after the Second World War. And in respect for his style, um, at Hardy, we basically use primarily Grand and Petit Champagne Cruz, Baudry and Fambois. Most of our products for many years were Fin Champagne. As our um, distinguished audience will know, uh, when you say Fin Champagne, it designates a blend of only two crews which is Grand and Petit Champagne exclusively. Um, that's what my family and my company, after, after we, we were not only family, decided to continue. So basically, I would say 60% of what we sell today is Fin Champagne. It is true for our VSOP and it is true for our XO and up. Over 30 years of aging uh, on our primary, I mean, the, the high grades, the, the upper grade qualities, after 30 years of age, we only use Grand Champagne for the longevity and the quality of the eau de vis after such long age. But we're very fortunate to carry also an organic cognac today, which has been a challenge, as you know. And for this organic, we chose some wine growers that were located um, really in areas that were not only Grand and Petit Champagne. And we have this beautiful bordery and we have an amazing Fambois to add. So basically, I would say, to, just to sum it up, uh, the, four, uh, the heart of the region is where really we focus. We do not use uh, Bon Bois and Bois Ordinaire, like Highland Park in Scotch would tell you, they don't use the, uh, the La Gavelin area. They, they don't go for um, uh, some very different distinguished taste that they don't want to find in their cognac. So nothing wrong with that. It's just that the style, of the Hardy House was defined long before I came into the business. Thank you. Alexandra, would you like to say a few words on this topic, please? Uh, yes, so terroir, terroir is, uh, is very, very important. Huh? Uh, terroir, when you talk about terroir, you talk about the, the subsoil, you talk about the climate, you talk about the know-how, uh, you talk about also which, what, what are the grapes that you, you are gonna use. And uh, Rémi Martin, you know, it was founded by a wine grower, 
And so we have our own vineyards and we work, uh, all of them are situated in Grand Champagne, but we uh, also, uh, all the Rémi Martin Cognac are Cognac Fin Champagne, like uh, uh, Benedict just, just mentioned. So situated at the heart of the Cognac region. This is a decision that was taken uh, in 1927. And even uh, the, the last Rémi Martin was, was making some in uh, 1898. So very, very long time ago. The whole idea with those crews is that they is to get a style, a unique aromatic intensity. However, you need more time for those uh, crew to, uh, to reveal themselves, everything they, they have to offer um, on, on the tasting. And, uh, and that's why we don't uh, do VS. We start at Idnerami at VSOP and we go uh, up like this. And as you go up, you have more and more Grand Champagne in that blend which is the uh, one that gives uh, eau de vie with a lot of uh, uh, elegance, finesse, and, uh, and richness. So just, uh, yes, again, these are, you know, very important for the style of the house. And, uh, and the, the, it starts with the soil, with the grapes. Yeah, all the way to the tasting 10, 30, 40, 50 years later. Great. Sullivan? So as for Ducey, um, so just for you to know, like Ducey is a young brand. It's been created like in 2012, uh, which is super young in the cognac, um, the cognac family, in the cognac um, category. And Michel Casavecchia, the seller master, when he created the brand, he wanted to have a cognac that is like basically like the modern expression of, uh, of cognac. And he wanted something that was like elegant and uh, get this fineness that you could find in the Grand and Petit Champagne. But he wanted as well to have like the robustness, like I would say, like the, um, the fruitiness and the, the, the texture, the terroir notes that you can find in the bonbois and the, in the fin bois. So basically, Ducé is based on both of the, those, not both like Grand Champagne, Petit Champagne, fin bois and bonbois, because all those uh, terroirs work together to give an expression of cognac that was, that was like, that is enjoyable by itself as a traditional cognac and that shines through cocktail. As uh, Alexandre, as uh, Ray Martin, we do start with a VSOP to have like this, uh, this complexity in terms of flavors. Excellent, thank you. David? Yes, to conclude on this item, very essential, as said uh, Alexandre, um, without terroir, no cognac, without grape, no cognac. And uh, this uh, fabulous diversity of terroir, uh, which gives each house the possibility of finding its own style, its own profile. That's why we don't speak about one cognac, but cognacs, because each cognac is different. It starts with the soils. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about distillation. Distillation starts at the beginning of October and by law has to end at the end of March. Uh, the wines are distilled in pot stills twice and the pastilles are heated by direct fire. This is in a, it takes considerable skill to be able to distill with direct fire. And this is uh, in stark contrast with other spirits categories. For example, whiskey, which most of it is distilled with steam. It takes nine liters of wine to produce one liter of eau de vie. The human factor, it is indispensable in this particular process as every single decision is being taken after smelling and tasting the eau de vie coming off the steel. We have a multitude of questions to ask ourselves and opportunities during this time. Questions as, should we distill on the lease? Should we distill off the lease? Should we distill a spirit that is gonna be matured for a short period of time or a longer period of time? I would like to ask our esteemed panelists to Chim in regarding this process. Benedict? Well, what is very interesting for Hardy is that the fact that we don't own vineyards um, allows us to work with uh, a co-op behind us with at least 200 wine growers, most of them owning their own pot stills. And which is crucial, it's not my role, but it's the, the seller master, uh, Michael Bouilly, who is the one selecting the, the, the little wine samples. And as you said uh, prior, Dan, 
What is very important is the quality of the ingredients that you're going to distill. Um, the great advantage of having this panel of distillers um, allow us to select very carefully the way we want our product to be distilled. For sure, we distill with lees. I mean, our, our, um, it has been done much before I came uh, on board at, at Hardy. Uh, my grandfather was, was using the lees. He enjoyed that very much. He thought it was giving more texture to the product. And this is what we request. The, the great advantage of having a wonderful uh, blender like we do have, Michael, um, is really to go, first of all, select the wine samples, then uh, select the distillate products. I mean, when it's done at 71, 72% alcohol. And as you said, from the get-go, it knows which one will age and which one will not, which is very interesting because not every cognac can wait 30 or 40 years or more. And as you know, particularly in the United States, the majority of what we sell is definitely VS and VSOP. Um, our, our great, some of our great leaders, you know, like the Hennessy with their VS and Remy with their VSOP are really leading and do say with their VSOP. So there's no question that we need those, the, this distillation to be very precise and very carefully directed the way our blender wants because he will need the best quality to do to do the the assemblage to do the blending when the the, the cognacs reach a certain age so distillation this pastille is a marvelous invention if you look at the at this uh, uh, the swan neck if you look at the, the the quality of the copper and if you I, I would strongly encourage any of our viewer today to to come during the distillation process which starts basically when the, the, the harvest is just finishing, which is basically now until the end of March. Very few people know that if you don't respect this timing, the distillation process stops on 31st of March. And if unfortunately you distill on 1st of April, well, your product cannot be called cognac. And that's why cognac will, will and is the benchmark of the brandy industry. Absolutely, thank you. Alexander? Thank you, Dan. Um, well, when we talk about uh, distillation, you know, you have to, again, you know, go back to a, a quality, quality grapes, quality wine. Uh, and then from there, at Rémy Martin, it's, it's historical as well. We keep with the tradition and we've always been distilling on the lees um, from our own vineyard, but also from our partners. And I was talking to the... To the Stella Master today about the distillation because he's been uh, giving advice to the growers. The reason we have our own vineyard as well is that we can advise the growers of, uh, you know, being a pilot and try new things um, about the, the respect on the, of the environment, but also the search for, for excellence. And, uh, and what he's telling me is definitely distilling on the lease give us more richness, you know, those fatty acids, fatty components. Uh, give a lot of beautiful um, aromas and texture of that eau de vie when it comes out of the pot still, which all this is done by, by, by men, you know, when they, they're choosing to do the cuts, yeah, the head, the heart, the tail. Well, all this is, if you go to a, a distillery in the region, right, that's going to start very soon now, you'll have all these beautiful aromas and the men are going to do those, those cuts, uh, the master distiller. And the... Um, and the, the, the fact that you have an eau de vie that is very rich, that gives all these beautiful peach, uh, pear aromas with texture, thanks to the lees, you'll have, uh, the eau de vie is gonna be able to age much longer. And again, when you age is when more aromas are created, yeah, because of the contact with the wood. So, so it's very important to have an eau de vie with an amazing aromatic uh, potential from day one in order to later on with aging, with blending, to be able to reach an amazing cognac. Thank you, Alexander. Sullivan? Yeah, actually this is really interesting because the three houses in the panel are distilling on the lease. Um, so yes, yeah, so the same thing with Michel Casaveca, I like to distill uh, over the lease because of this texture and all this, uh, I would like to say like bring some kind of fattiness to the to the, the cognac, all this mouse feel that you can you can have in the in the set. 
come from the distillation over the leaves. And um, when it comes for the, the coupe, the way we cut the, the eau de vie, every year, uh, the recall is, the, the, the harvest is different. So the, the wine is different. So there's always different way of distilling. So Michel goes to all the wine growers and master distillers we're working with to calibrate the way he's going to cut this batch. And, uh, and yeah, as you said, like that's a human factor. That's that, the, the human factor is really important because like it's all about like nosing and tasting. Like you don't really taste straight from the Alambic because that's like 72 ABV, it's quite, quite strong. But like just the nose, that's something that a machine cannot really replace. I mean, like, we'll never replace. That's what is beautiful in Cognac because you really need the, the human factor in, a, in the distillation process and in the aging, but we will see this uh, in a minute. So yeah, we do, we do distill over the leaves to get this, uh, this structure and this uh, smoothness and roundness. Thank you. David? Yeah, to conclude with uh, this ITEM distillation, it's concentration. Uh, we look for uh, the best things of the wine. And uh, lease without lease, uh, it's so many potentiality to express uh, different quality. And for me, um, it's for the, the master seller, um, what the color palette is for, for the painter. Okay, great, thank you. Now, the eau de vie, the spirit comes of the steel clean. So how does it become cognac? It becomes cognac, through maturation in oak casks. Here again, we have several options at our disposal. Are we gonna use new casks or previously used casks? What is gonna be the size of these particular casks? Are we gonna employ casks that are made with wood with a tight grain or a white grain? Are we gonna mature these particular casks in dry or wet cells? Cask management is very active with the spirit being moved from cask to cask periodically and moved also around the cellar for different microclimates. After maturation for at least two years, the spirit becomes cognac. At two years of age, it becomes VS, which stands for very special. At four years of age, it becomes VSOP, which stands for very special old and pay. If we choose to mature for longer than 10 years, it becomes XO, also known as extra old. We do have some phenomenon that is called angel share, which is actually evaporation from the casks. To give you an example, if we take 10 casks of cognac right now, and we choose to mature those 10 casks for 10 years, we're gonna lose approximately two of them to evaporation. Would our guest please talk a little, about, uh, a little bit about the maturation of the product? Benedict? Well, in our case, um, our Blender and master seller is a uh, seller master is absolutely adamant about using only brand new oak to start the life of the cognac. He, he compares very quickly and very easily uh, young cognac to children. And he says, if you want to raise a children in good health, he has to have the right nourishment, the, not, the right food. Well, you have to consider oak and we use limousine oak over troncé. That's our style. We like uh, larger grain instead of tighter grain. So we lose more for evaporation. This beautiful and poetically speaking uh, angel share is the nightmare of any CFO uh, because it's a lot of money that evaporates. It's a devil's it, share. Actually. Exactly. And it's, it is, it is uh, at the same time, um, a, a very necessary component in the fact that the concentration and what evaporates is not the best. And uh, what stays in the barrel is the best. So after we distill with the lees, after the, the selection, when we do a VS, uh, when, we, when we age a VS at Hardy, the VS is aged three years, not two, because we like to add an extra year to the aging. And out of these three, two years in brand new oak and in a humid cellar to start. But uh, the extra year will be in a, in a dry cellar. So when we make that choice, we go for more evaporation, but more concentration. And it's so obvious when you bring the cognac back after the third year, that's the color is there. The beautiful uh, natural caramel color uh, comes forward and it's ready to be sold. On the VSOP, uh, we ex exactly do the same thing. 
more age, as you explained. But um, what we do is that we keep the brand new cognac, the, the, the cognac we have selected to become a VSOP, only 14 months in brand new oak, knowing that he will have extra uh, time to spend in older barrels, the barrels that we call roux, because they are already aged. We're not looking at the same characteristics in the aging, we're just looking at less evaporation and more flavors. And it's the same for EXO, so definitely for us, brand new oak at the beginning, beginning uh, limousine oak, and then making sure we rotate and use older barrels to bring more finesse and more elegance to the product. Thank you. Alexandra? Uh, yes, yeah, so, um, so what's interesting, uh, again, us, us too at Remy, we carry on with tradition and, uh, and we are using a large grain uh, limousine oak uh, barrel. Yeah. Why? Because, you know, the limousine forest is just down the road. So we've been doing that for almost uh, 300 years. It made sense. Uh, and, but now when we analyze the, the wood and the, and the exchange, when you want to make some uh, very old cognac, you have this give and take, which worked perfectly for us. Um, and, uh, you know, we have uh, at Rémy Martin, we're lucky to have done the choice of Fin Champagne long, long time ago. And today we have the largest stock of uh, fine Champagne cognac uh, uh, in the world. And so the job of the cellar master is to look after all this diversity of eau de vie. We have over 30 different cellars. Some are dry, some are uh, humid. And he's going to play with all these different casks yeah, from different cellars yeah, in order, so everything is different because Mother Nature gives us different things every year, but he's going to play with all these panels to be able to compose uh, cognacs that are very, very rich, very complex, very aromatic. And this large stock also enable him to recreate year after year this complexity so that the Ray Martin VSOP your, your father bought or the one that your son will buy or the EXO, um, of tomorrow is the same quality. So this is also very important for a great brand like Ray Martin to be uh, not just excellence, but to be consistent in excellence. That's the, so, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the aging and blending is really an art, you know, and that's the cellar master who is in charge of this and is the guardian of the temple, the guardian of the Ray Martin style. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, another common point we have, we all use limousine, uh, limousine wood to make our, our barrels. So same thing, Michel likes to, uh, to have those uh, big ground to have a really nice interaction between the wood and the, and the cognac, the eau de vie, because it, as long as it doesn't spend a minimum of two years, it's not cognac. So we will have like, let's say like 15% of like uh, brand new barrels. And, uh, and the thing is that you call it brand new until like it passed like five years because that's the moment that the tannin doesn't get into the wine, the, the eau de vie anymore. So there's no exchange, but that's a perfect cask to age because of the, the pores that you have in the wood. So you have like your barrel that's going to stay, the eau de vie that's going to stay for like, uh, I would say like a year, year and a half to get all those wood components. And then you put another eau de vie, another brand new eau de vie inside. And this for five years. That's where you're gonna get all the color, and then you put your other V into another barrel. That's like the, as Benedict was saying, the barrel who, the ginger. Can we say ginger? I don't know how we say that in English. Like the ginger. old barrel. Red, <laughs> red. Maybe you red. can say red. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be interesting to translate that. And uh, and then you let just like the the other V breathe by itself, have the interaction with the air through the through the wood. Uh, the particularity of the Chateau de Cognac, where this thing is made, is that we have like two types of cellar within our walls. Um, we have like imagine like this chateau has been like created like about like a thousand years uh, ago. So we have like really big, thick um, stone walls about like three meters wide. And this will allow us to have like around like at the, the same level of the water, those uh, humid cellar with like about like 80 to 85% of constant humidity. And like this humid cellar will bring some uh, fruitiness through the, through the aging while the eau de vie that we put in the dry cellar will be like more like the spiciness, all the woody notes. What is interesting is that in the humid cellar, you will have 
the angel share will be focused more like on the alcohol, while in the dry cellar is more the water that will uh, evaporate. So blending those two, um, those two, all of it, those two cellars will create the identity that you say is today. And um, and yeah, I mean like, what is a uh, what I wanted to add is like yeah. So you have like grand champagne, petit champagne that will be like more the eau de vie that will keep like in a, in a dry cellar to have like this longest uh, way of like aging to get all the, the to extract all the aromas. And uh, actually our XO, the Duce XO, as most of the product will be like from the, the humid cellar because we want this fruitiness, all the fresh fruit that you would have in the VSOP would be more like confit in the XO. And this combination is just like what the, the Chateau can, uh, can allow us to have. Thank you. David? Yes, it's beautiful to hear things like that. For me, aging, blending, it's an art. It's two arts, very complementary. Um, in cognac, uh, we consider time as a raw material because without time, it's not possible to have cognac. Um, we love angels because without us, it's not possible to produce so magnificent produce as XO, extra and, and so on. Uh, just an amazing things and uh, thanks a lot for these beautiful things. Thank you. Blending cognacs, it is a highly skilled profession which requires a very long training, a very acute olfactory and gustative sense and also a very deep understanding on how different cognacs interact with each other. It is a skill that is passed from generation to generation through a lot of practical work. There are no books on blending cognac. That's why all these blenders are always held in really high esteem. As a final note, I would like to ask our panelists to tell us something about the unique characteristic that old cognacs develop after uh, long maturation, which is Francio, Francio Charente. Rancio, yes. Tell us a little bit about it. Benedict. Who starts? Benedict, yes. <laughs> well, Rancio is a very unique um, um, thing. Um, how could you explain that? It is a blend, it's a little oily. Um, some people say that it smells like mushroom, uh, like the wood, you know, in the fall, like uh, uh, something oily, something nutty. Um, and I think for me, that's really one of the characteristics of what really uh, uh, cognac, old cognac tastes like. They, for me, they also taste like spices, you know, the, the cinnamon, the cardamom, the saffron. That's what you find in old cognacs. And it, is, it makes the product so, um, so long in the mouth. I mean, so the longevity, the, the, the way it fills up your mouth, and it stays on your palate forever. Uh, this is a great, you know, of course, we need many years to reach that. And as David said, um, there is no cognac without aging. Um, I know that the majority of cognac sold in the world is in the VS and VSOP categories. But if any of you listening tonight have time and, and the envy of discovering something so spectacular, go for EXO, go for Ordage, go for Extra, go for because you will find a unique experience that very few spirits in the world can offer. And this holds you that we discuss is part of what um, definitely we, we define with, uh, with, uh, with the cognac aging. Thank you. Alexandra? Well, uh, Rancio, the, the beauty, it's, it's something completely unique to, uh, uh, to, to the cognac region and uh, and uh, us, we're lucky at, at Rue Martin, we have uh, Louis XIII, you know, which is an icon, an icon of, uh, of, of luxury, but also the, an, an icon for the, the, the Rancio itself. So you will have those, those amazing aromas of uh, things like, uh, you know, wax, honeyed, um, leather, uh, tobacco, you know, like Cuban cigars. So all these notes that uh, are almost um, vivid, almost like skin that you can touch and the smell is uh, it, it's it's stunning if you can go and visit go down uh, a cellar with eau de vie which uh, that was been there for almost centuries 
uh, you will know what rancio mean because it, it captures the whole essence. And, and, and then when you taste a, a glass of Lutres, then you really understand it because you have this explosion of aromas. It's, it's at the same time as being light, being uh, floral and super elegant. You have also this uh, rich, this essence that, you know, capture your, your heart and, and guts as well. So yeah, that's Rancio. Yeah, and I second my peers, like the, the, the beauty of Rancio is like, you need to at least wait for 10 years to get this, uh, this layer of aromas developed and having it like over the years, keep on like bringing new aromas. is just beautiful. That's, that's the, the, the beauty of cognac because like it just keep evolving through the years. Um, there is something that I like in the, the Duce XO is that you have the smell of like blue cheese as well that I think is like really uh, uh, specific to, to the Rancio and the, the humid cellar we have. And, um, and yeah, all the floral notes, the spiciness. I mean, that, that's like a major component of, uh, of all cognacs. Great, thank you. David? Yes, Francio, it's the expression of, of time, another, another way. Uh, for me, it's the perfect balance between the aromas, the oxidation, um, perfect dry fig. Um, it's a perfume. Um, without alcohol, it's the expression of, of the art of cognac, the wellness and the perfect balance between all the aromas without alcohol. I would like to thank our panelists for sharing their best knowledge today with us. I would also like to thank our attendees for being with us today. We have greatly preferred to have the opportunity to meet everybody in person However, unfortunately, we have some current events that made this not possible. We are, however, looking forward to meet everybody in person sometime soon. In the meanwhile, if there are any questions regarding this presentation or any questions about cognac in general, please address them to our virtual booth. Cheers. 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 Salute. 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 Thank you, Dan. My pleasure. Always good and smooth. Yes, and we wish everybody would share with us. That would be that yeah. would be a wonderful yeah. experience. Yeah. We need to share. Best Thanks wishes so. from Cognac. <laughs> yes, very best. Yeah. Very best from, from Cognac. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.